Hi, this is Lyndall with Watery Wishes and today I have the Somerset Stamp August Card Kit Unboxing and this card kit is called Mandy's Flowers named after the 6x8 stamp set that comes in the kit and you get a Yard of Maze Arts Natural Twine String Burlap a small sample bottle of Bubblegum Blush Nouveau Drops you get some tiny hearts sprinkle enamel shapes from Doodlebug. You get this beautiful pattern paper pack from Bow Bunny. They are 12 single sided sheets from the early bird pack. They are 6x6 six six. and they have some beautiful teals and yellows and soft pinks in them some of them almost look like vintage wallpaper there's one that has a very art deco look and feel to it they really are some beautiful papers and they have inspired several cards since I got this kit those colors those papers they are just beautiful I, I'm not a big pattern paper user but there's just something about these pattern papers that make me want to use soft pastel pink colors now here's the uh, Maddie's flowers 6x8 stamp set for which the kit is named after and you get some flowers in various different vessels a picket fence and some really nice sentiments in some really nice font some of them and the sentiment reads with love a special gift for you thank you with thanks for everything for your kindness thank you in scripty words for your love picked with love from my heart to yours Grown with love and another scripty for you. Now this is the 6x6 cling stamp called Modern Flowers. And this thing is just beautiful. I can see me using that on many a background. This is the powder blue lace luxury embossed paper. And it's around half a sheet of regular cardstock. Here is the Simon Says Stamp 120 pound white cardstock and the Cotton Candy cardstock. So in the kit you get the white cardstock, cotton candy, the tonic Blue, powder blue lace you don't get my hair sorry I should like a husky um, you get the 6x6 uh, modern flowers stamp set you get the 6x8 Mandy's flowers clear stamp set you get those beautiful patent papers from Bow Bunny the early bird papers that are single sided and there's 12 of those You get the sprinkles, sprinkle enamel shapes, the tiny hearts from Doodlebug. You get the the twine from Maze Arts, and that's the kit. So now on to the card. So I only own a tiny little Versamark cube. I need a proper embossing ink pad, but I'll get there. Um, so I don't get a perfect impression the first time I stamp this but that's okay because I'm heat embossing and it's in a stamp platform I can position it back in there after I've heated the embossing powder and stamp the area that got missed 
So I'm using Hero Arts white embossing powder. And it's really hard to see here, but those flowers are so pretty on that white cardstock. Here I am inking just those parts of the stamp that didn't get inked up properly the first time. And then I'll put more powder on that and heat it again. Good to go. That's the brilliance of using a stamp positioning tool. Now I'm using some cracked pistachio distress ink with a cheap disposable brush. And this is just normal cardstock. This is Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I'm not using a heap of water. So, I mean, it's going to warp, but it, it doesn't pill or anything. So it's fine. Um, now I'm just using the leftover bit of space on that piece of cardstock to print out some flowers from the six by eight stamp set which I'm going to Copic color so I'm stamping them in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink and you can see the flamingos on my Simon Says Stamp desk pad because I really got this kit just after the last one so now, I am by no means a Copic colorist. If you wish to learn about Copics and how to color, you should visit uh, Kelly Lettervolwa or Sandy Alnock's channels. Sandy has classes that you can um, you can attend. She also has some charts on Copics that you can download and fill out. But uh, here I'm just generally. I lay in where my shadows are going to go and then I lay them in and I go from darkest down to lightest. Sometimes I start off lightest to darkest then go back but mostly I just sort of lay in where my shadows are going to be, put the shadows in and then bring them back. Now for the greens I used G40, G43 and G46. For the pot I used the YR20, YR23, YR27. For this metallic looking vessel that I'm colouring I used C00, C1, C3 and C5. Sorry about my camera coming in and out of focus. I actually set something up after I filmed this, so my future videos after the next seven or so should be maybe a bit better. I don't know, we'll see how it works if what I've done actually works to prevent camera shaking and focus stuff ups but we'll see so with the flowers I'm just using my mid-tone to lay in where the shadows are going to be then I come in with my darkest where I've put that mid-tone color and I come back with my mid-tone color and bring it out a little bit further to blend the dark color and then I go over the whole thing with my lightest color. Now for the flowers, this one I'm using 
RV000, RV52 and RV55. And for the other flower, I colour in basically the same, the other image, except I use the, uh, I use violets, I use V20, V22 and V25. And I colour in the centre with the YR27, which is the same colour I used on the pot. I really like my Copics, but uh, definitely not very proficient at them, not yet. So definitely, if you really, really want to learn, definitely check out Kelly Lederbauer and Sandy Elmock. So here I'm just coming in with my colorless blender and uh, pushing back some of the color where I've gone out of the lines. Now here I'm just trimming down my background piece. And I actually got a bit of the uh, YR27 on this, but I was able to take the colorless blender and push it back down. So you didn't see it anymore. Now I'm making a card base out of the Simon Says Stamp 120 white. And I'm scoring it in the line of my paper trimmer. So if you can only afford a paper trimmer or a scoreboard and not both get the paper trimmer you can use it to cut and score just and you don't need a scoring tool I mean I absolutely love my Teflon bone folder but you can use anything as long as it's not too sharp or too wide to score you, your cardstock with it's it's not necessary to have a bone folder though they are nice and they do come in handy so fussy cut those images out and I cut a strip of the cotton candy cardstock and some vellum which both of which I had to cut twice I had ended up stamping the <laughs> sentiment three times this is the third time just because I didn't want the upload to take forever. So the first two times I stamped it, it was hanging over the edge. The strip wasn't wide enough. So as my dad used to teach me, measure twice, cut once. Well, I didn't measure twice. So I had to redo it. But third time's charm it turned out really well the, th the third time and uh, the vellum was just the wrong width don't know where I went wrong there but I did but I've still got scrap I can use it for other things so now I'm just mapping out where everything's going to go and I get some one and a half inch score tape for this background panel because it's a bit warped from being heated from embossing and the slight bit of water it's had on it and this stuff when you put it down it's not going to move so I sort of peel up little bits of the backing paper and make like little tabs until I'm happy with the placement and then I can push down and pull the remainder of the backing paper off. I find this is a really good way to make sure you get your placement straight and good without having to redo it and cut panels away because you've used the score tape. Now this tape, it's not score tape but it's a score like type tape and once I've finished with the card, it I can see the line where the bulk of that tape is. It's not particularly thin for some reason. So if I was going to do this again, I'd probably use some liquid glue. So 
so now that I've got the placement of that cotton candy strip on the vellum snip off the ends then I'll adhere the flowers to each other And the good thing about liquid glue is you've got a bit of wiggle room. Here I'm just popping up those flowers on some foam tape, pulling little scraps off the side of my roll. Getting my placement, sticking them to the cotton candy strip, pulling the rest of the backing paper off. The card is almost done. I'm going to take some bubblegum blush Nouveau drops that I've pre made. I, everything was going wrong this day and I if I'd have put the wet drops on the card I would have smeared them it's like guaranteed so I like to have some pre-made especially if you need to rush a card and you want to put embellishments on it but you don't have like overnight to wait for the drops to dry really well it's really handy to have some pre-made and I'm storing them in a film canister with a little bit of anti-static powder in there. Now, it was one of those days. My multimedia mat didn't want to cooperate and it's just blocked. It won't. It just won't work for me at the moment and I can get it to come out it's just way too hard to get it to come out so I've either got to hunt down its original lid and put that back on or buy something else to to put on it so that I can get a precision because that ain't working, not for me anyway. So it's been delegated to the not going to use it for now pile until I figure it out. So there's the card. Hope you liked the video. And uh, if you did like it, hit subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget, have fun crafting your imagination. Bye.